There we go. Mr. Bill Bean is here with me today. I want to welcome everyone that's tuned in so far. I think with everyone spending so much time at home, so many people trying to get online, we had a real struggle at the trying to get connected there on the back end of YouTube. But I am pleased to say that we are here. We're live. And it's the power hour of prayer with the spiritual warrior, something myself and Bill a new project that we're embarking on every Sunday, right here on the channel. And like I say, Bill will be here every week for the foreseeable future. During, Bill, what are very, very interesting and testing times. And how are you doing, sir? I hope your family's okay. Uh, we're doing fine, brother. Thank you. And I pray the same for you and your family. And I also want to thank you for making an adjustment here in this time. And I'm sorry. Uh, for everyone out there, we, you know, our regular set time is 7 p.m. on Sundays, but I had a scheduling conflict. I didn't realize that I had to be on another show at 7 p.m. Eastern this evening. So we will continue every Sunday to uh, broadcast live uh, from the Kev Baker show platform here at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So thank you, Kev, and thank everybody out there for coming in uh, an hour early. Yeah, we're very flexible here, and um, it's quite a big show, actually. It's quite a big deal you've got coming up in the UK today with Howard Hughes on talk radio. Well, I mean, that's um, quite a big audience. I'm very, um, very impressed that you're going to be on there. And a big shout out to Howard Hughes for having you on talk radio. But that's very, very um, up there in the mainstream, brother. You're really knocking it out of the park. Well, I'm very much looking forward to it, and uh, I just pray that God will speak through me to to give a good word for someone out there who may be listening in. Absolutely. Now, Bill, let me talk to you then about these times that we're in. The world is a very different place than from even last week when we last spoke. What do you make of everything going on, Bill? It's all happening fast, and I'll tell you, Kev, I'm inundated with people contacting me for prayer and guidance. Uh, whether it's through phone calls, emails, text, uh, social media, whatever it may be, people are on edge. Some people are panicking, and justifiably so. These are very, very trying times. And this is why this show is so necessary, because I, I always pray that God will work through me to be a blessing to someone, and you as well. So I pray that we can be a voice of reason, a comforting voice, uh, uh, just... Um, a place that uh, people can escape to for an hour and get fed by the power of God and the Word of God. That's exactly what my objective is in this whole thing. So how are things unfolding on your side of the pond, may I ask you, Bill? Because over here, we are slowly but surely going into a full and hard lockdown. I was listening to our Prime Minister today, and he almost echoed what I was saying the other day. And that was that, you know, we really need to be responsible, no matter what we think about what's going on in the world right now. If we act responsibly and take the advice of the social distancing, then we kind of take away the, the need for the government to come down harder. But over here, Mother and Sunday, people still going out, partying, pubs opening their doors on the quiet, you know, having lock-ins. I, I really, it amazes me. I'm astounded at what I'm seeing playing out in the real world, Bill, as potentially one of the most serious threats we've ever faced is uh, among us. I totally agree. And so this makes perfect sense to me because this has been a carefully planned agenda for a long, long time, and it starts right with the devil. And so the devil doesn't care if you believe in him. He wants you to love yourself. Jesus was selfless. He loved others and put himself last. It's the devil who's selfish. So if you take a look in our world and you take a look at uh, the programming, the entertainment industry, sports, all these types of things, you will see the reoccurring theme of I love me, it's all about me, and I'm so great. Uh, even the people in the political places are boasters, and they'll tell you how great they are and all this kind of stuff. So this takes me, uh, I might as well mention this scripture right now, this passage here, 2 Timothy verse 3, and this is uh, verses uh, 4 through 7. 
This also, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. And that's exactly what we are immersed in now. And like you mentioned, this is to be taken seriously. This is not a hoax. There are real people that are very sick and real people that are dying far too many. So this is not a hoax. This is to be taken very seriously. And we should come together as people, the human race of planet Earth, and come together and try to do the best that we can for each other and take the appropriate measures, first off, The whole reason for us being here now is to take this to God in prayer. But secondly, we have to have common sense as well and to adhere to some steps and and guidelines that will help to uh, hopefully, by the power of God, try and keep this from spreading anymore. And I certainly pray that after today, I'm going to be praying here very shortly that God is just going to kill this whole thing and get rid of it. I certainly pray that. Um, But in the meantime, we do have to be kind and considerate to each other and take the appropriate steps so we can work together. And I don't want to see anyone sick with this. I don't want to see anyone die from this. And that should be the mindset for everyone, Kev. Absolutely, Bill. I couldn't agree with you more. And at a time when the powers that shouldn't be have the potential to fulfill a lot of um, different parts of their plan, the the things that they can use this crisis for. You know, I think the very most, or the least we can do, is not give them extra justification by flouting the social distancing and by almost going about like Superman, like, oh, I can't get it, it's not going to get me. Even if you think like that, think of your grandparents. Or think of your friend's ch- child who might pick it up inadvertently. You know, Correct. Think, think of others at this time. And it's usually in the face of such adversity, though, Bill, that the human race does actually the best aspects of it come to the fore. And I'm hoping right now we will see people coming together, albeit electronically for a while. You know, we are going to have to distance. Let's be adults and, and be serious. But um, hopefully it can bring out the best of us and hopefully we can maybe rebuild that community spirit that, that's been sorely lacking in, in recent times. I totally agree. And it, uh, it really is on us. And if we can come back to God, and look, I'm not here to twist anybody's arm to believe a certain way or do this or do that, but I'm telling you, I'm here as a living witness to the power of God. God works through me to help people from all over this world, and I thank him and praise him for it. God has transformed my life from victim to victor, and he works through me as a source of power to deliver and empower others. And so I say this in total truth, that if we come back to God and we repent, because every man is guilty of something, so we all have to repent for something. I've been on my knees plenty of times repenting, believe me. Um, If we seriously and truly come back to God and make him first and accept his son, Yahshua, Jesus, the Christ, God will have favor on us. So have mercy on us. I've been in so many life-threatening situations in my life, Kevin, you know this. God has protected me every time, and I thank him and praise him for it. But without having an established, real and authentic relationship with him, I shudder to think that I really think that I wouldn't be on this earth. And if I were, I'd probably be in prison right now. So it is by the power of God that he makes the impossible possible. So I'm urging people now, find him, seek him, find him, and make him first in your life. And allow Yahshua, Jesus the Christ, to come in and guide your life. God will keep a covering over us if we do this. And even though we are in perilous times, make no mistake, God can keep this covering over us and protect us and work through us to be a blessing to others. So really, that's what this whole thing is about, is to try 
and plant these good seeds with people to where they will consider what I'm saying and then develop a real and authentic relationship with God. And there will be a lot of people that are anxious right now, Bill, you know, and, and, and you know, there's nothing to be embarrassed about, folks. It, these are really kind of monumental times that we're living through. We've never seen anything like this before, so you might be a bit apprehensive. You know, people in that mindset, Bill, do you think they could find comfort in listening to what you're saying here, turning to God at this time? I mean, God will always accept anyone, right? That's what I've always been told to, to kind of about it. Is that right? That's absolutely true, yes. And so no man can intercede in our personal relationship and connection with God. So it is up to each and every person to make the conscious decision because God gave us free will. We're free to make our choices. Uh, but it is up to us, each and every individual, to decide to come back to God and make him first and accept his son, Yahshua, Jesus the Christ, as the Savior and the Messiah. And if you can do this, life won't become perfect, but I can guarantee you by my own experiences and the transformation that God's made in my life, life will become much, much better. And I've said this God knows how many times, but I'll say it again, it's worth repeating. My life is probably 50 times more blessed or maybe even 100 times more blessed than it's ever been cursed. And that is because I made the greatest decision that I've ever made in my life. And that decision was coming back to God and making him first and accepting Yahshua, Jesus the Christ. Absolutely. Now, Bill, let me ask you then, because something we've talked about in the past that is very, very um, uh, right at the forefront of people's minds right now, especially after what I was looking at today, we speak a lot about the cashless society, Mark yeah. of the Beast. Now, with everything going on in the world, Christine Lagarde, and uh, she was famous for making that really weird speech about the number seven. She's up there in the IMF bank. She's a big, big player. She's now talking about, you know, maybe we need to do away with the cash. It's a good opportunity for us to move into a more cashless world. And even with so many people now being at home, Commerce basically coming to a standstill, shops not open. You're going to find a big switch towards electronic payments. And I think this is one thing that when we come out the other side of this, and we will eventually, the world's going to look a very different place, Bill. And it could be that system that we've been warning about forever now. I totally agree. All the ingredients are here. And I hope I'm wrong. I hope that, you know, people say to me, you crazy man, you know, you, it never happened like that. I certainly hope that that's what happens. I really do. I want to be proven wrong on this. Believe me, I don't want to be right on this. Uh, but I see it right before my eyes. It's right there. There are three steps. We're in step one, phase one. And the second step and phase will be to go to a cashless society. They're going to say something like the money's too dirty now carrying the virus. You can't have that anymore. Uh, so they will go to the cashless society. And step three is the end game final step. And that is getting the masses to accept the mark of the beast, which I believe is going to be through these chips. And Kev, we're seeing this now. We've been seeing this for a while in these movies, these people like The Rock and this Vin Diesel and all these types that are doing these different types of movies that are showing the merging of man and machine. And these, you know, uh, men become part of the machine and they're superhuman and do these extraordinary things. That is how it's going to be marketed. And if you think people stood in line for those iPhones when they came out, just wait and see how many millions are standing in line to get these chips, which I absolutely 100% believe are the mark of the beast. And let me say this, once that happens, the person that takes that and accepts that, even if your very life depends on it, you are cut off from God. It's over. There's no coming back. There's no repenting. It's severed. Your relationship with God is severed because now you've become a part of the beast system. You are literally taken over by the devil. 
So that is severed. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I'm speaking truth. It's severed. Your relationship with God is severed. You can never have any kind of relationship or go to heaven or anything else. After that, it's over. And so I pray that people will take in what I'm saying here, the gravity and importance of what I am saying here. It's absolutely the truth, and the devil knows this. And that's why he is putting this all together in this grand plan that's unfolding right now. He knows what he's doing. Very clever in how he sets these things up. And he has the market cornered in the world, and that includes control over all the world leaders. And so they are doing his bidding. And we've talked about this before, Kev. Perhaps it was a deal that they couldn't refuse. Maybe they were approached and said, look, you'll either go along with this agenda or your family will be killed. You'll watch them be tortured and die, and then you will be killed. Maybe it was a deal like that. I don't know. But I absolutely believe that these people are on board, and not only on board, but they are absolutely ushering all this in. You know, Bill, uh, I'm not sure if you've kind of uh, put this together today. However, however, here we are talking about all of this and this plan that's been, you know, in the making across the ages, really coming to fulfillment right now. And here, yeah. we, here we are talking about it on 3.22. Already a significant date when you think of Skull and Bones, 3.22. But this year, yeah. this year even more significant because people say life begins at 40. But what happens when a monument called the Georgia Guidestones turns 40 today? But, you know, life begins for a person. Is it a new order begins at 40 for a monument? It makes yeah. you wonder because that is its 40th birthday right now today. The very Georgia interesting. Guidestones. Yeah. yeah, very interesting, Kevin. It's, it's interesting how all these things are just really coming in, and they're coming in perfectly, in the perfect chaotic order, because that's what the devil does. You know, our God, Yahweh, he's the God of the universe, the creator of all things. He is a God of order. Yet the devil, he is the one who is and creates order out of chaos. So that's his order, is chaos. And then he brings that in, and that's perfect for him. So these steps fall into place in his world of order out of chaos. And that's exactly what we have right now, and that's what we're seeing. I mean, my goodness, we're talking about the Department of Justice coming out, you know, these headlines talking about uh, um, suspending the Constitution. I heard um, Governor Cuomo today in New York and you see, this is why it's the most confusing of times, because in one hand, I can see what he means, and in the other hand, I'm thinking, but this is what they want. And he was telling New Yorkers, he was saying, you really need to take this seriously. You, you need to treat this like a, a serious threat, because if not, basically, he was saying they're going to have to come down harder. And over here in the UK, Boris Johnson was asked about the police enforcing people quarantining and uh, self uh, social distancing things things like that bill and uh, he sounded like he was kind of oh no we won't we won't go that far i think we're only days away from that kind of lockdown cuz i don't see people changing their behavior and i'm not here to no. criticize them but you know these will be the same people that will probably moan when it does get harsher and we can't go anywhere and they're already talking about that here in America, Kev. They were already talking about it. I read an article about it last night. That, And even here in Maryland, they are going to enforce this, and they are going to arrest people who are noncompliant. The National Guard is already here in Baltimore. Um, I saw a video yesterday of what appeared to be at least a couple hundred of tanks that were going through the streets of San Diego. Um, this is very real. And if Trump declares that uh, he's going to lock down everything and they do suspend the Constitution, you are going to see a very strong military presence all over America. And then I feel the world will follow suit. And I don't think we've seen anything yet. And that's not me scaremongering or fearmongering, anything like that. But 
I look at Italy and they say we're maybe a, a couple of weeks behind Italy. I've seen a graph today and for the UK, when they compared the outbreak here to the numbers in Italy as they unfolded, we're actually ahead of Italy for where we, where we, where they were in numbers at this stage. So the potential for this to get a lot worse really quickly is that it's really, it's be, it's mind boggling, Bill. Absolutely sure mind boggling. And then it's the knock on effect, right? Because then the hospitals get full and then you've got people that go for cancer treatment, any other kind of treatment, they're affected. And that's when it just, again, it goes totally out of control. And and that comes back to being very careful again, being considerate. Look, I, I travel all over this country uh, helping people and I have a lot of trips lined up, but I'm not gonna be able to make those trips at this time because I have 100% faith that God will keep me safe and healthy and keep that off of me. But what if uh, I'm carrying something like that? And then, you know, I give that to a loved one or even strangers. I mean, I would never forgive myself. Exactly. So, you know, you have to keep your head and, and have sense in a, a situation like this to where um, we have to really consider others. So I, I pray that people will receive this message well. And, you know, I have... Uh, when we're done uh, speaking about what we're going to speak about, I want to make some uh, quotes from Jesus that I pray will bring comfort uh, to everyone that's watching and, and listening in here. And so uh, everything we're saying is absolutely the truth. I wish it wasn't, but it is. This is what we're dealing with. But on the flip side of that, if we keep our faith strong, God will make a way for us because God does make the impossible possible. Absolutely. And, you know, before we go there, Bill, like I was saying a moment ago, you know, I don't think we've seen anything yet in terms of numbers, but also on a, a kind of societal level as well. Because, yeah, people right now, they're still kind of uh, not taking it too seriously, some people. But then at some point, it is going to get very, very serious. And over here, we're already seeing shops shutting down, more and more people staying at home. Yeah. And I'm just waiting, and I hate to say it, but it's not rocket science. But we're going to have riots soon. There's going to be a time in London or one of these big cities. That, your city, for example. I, I, I mean, even before all of this. Oh, crime, yeah. Gangs, crime rate. And it's not, I'm not having a go at your city, Bill, but. It's the worst city in America, to be honest with you. It has gone that far, that fast. And, and I take no joy in saying it, but it's the truth. It is the worst city in America at this point in time. And you're in Baltimore, right? And then you think of well, somewhere like Chicago. Yeah. Think of Chicago. Yeah. On a normal weekend, Chicago's like a war zone. And then we, you get people, the stores are empty. And again, this isn't to fear monger, but I'm just kind of projecting a couple of weeks down the line because over here in the UK now, and I'll get my letter on Monday or Tuesday, I believe, but people with health conditions, respiratory conditions, we're all getting letters from the NHS to stay in for 12 weeks, and they say that they'll be delivering food and and things like this. But what happens when those people get sick? Yeah. And you, this, you know, again, Bill, you, see, you see how this gets all kind of crazy? It's, and, well, it's a vicious cycle. And yeah. so, again, this is where we really have to take this to God and trust in God. And, yes, we are in some very, very hard times right now, and maybe some harder times are yet to come. But through it all, if we can really come back to God and trust in him and have that level of strong faith, it's going to be okay. He'll make a way for us. And, and I know that sounds so easy to say, well, it's not easy, but I truly believe it 1 million percent because God's made a way for me so many times in my life and has worked so many miracles for me over during the course of my life that I know he'll do it again and he'll do it for anyone who decides that they want to make him first and have that really committed relationship and strong relationship. Therefore, if we draw closer to God, he'll draw closer to us. Absolutely, Bill. Now, I want to give you enough time to really talk to people. I know you've got some verses there you want to go over as well. So I'm going to give you the floor, brother. I know you've got a really big, big show coming up in the UK tonight. I'm going to be able to listen to that, but oh, prob probably great. through my television. So that's going to be awesome, dude. I'm really. Oh, that's fantastic. I was sharing with you, you, you know, that Howard Hughes, I'm 99% sure that 
when I was going through that very early waking up phase, I think 2004, 2005, I honestly thought I was going mad. I really did. And then one night lying in bed, listening to Howard Hughes, one of the few shows that I could find that would talk about myste mysterious kind of woo and the paranormal. And I remember uh, vividly this crazy Texan guy coming on at three in the morning and screaming from the top of his voice about that fateful day in September and how it was all planned. And, and that was my introduction to Alex Jones. And that's really how yeah. I, that night I went right down the rabbit hole. So it's kind of <sighs> synchronistic that today, you know, we've had to shuffle the, the, the kind of schedule here. I can't think of a better show to be moving our show for because it's almost like we've come full circle for me now because I'll be finishing up the show with you knowing that you're going on to Howard Hughes. It's weird. Weird <laughs> how the world works, isn't it? Uh, our God does work in mysterious ways, and so we thank him and praise him, and I'm just uh, really, um, I thank you again for having that flexibility to where we could push this show up an hour today. And uh, so it's all worked out, and, and I anticipate on having a great interview and, and show with Howard Hughes. Absolutely. It's going to be fantastic. So, Bill, I'm going to hand it back to you for, I think you've got some passages from Jesus there. Yeah. The first yeah. thing I want to do, though, is I want everybody to come together in prayer. And, and if you're watching right now, please just pause and close your eyes and just join me in prayer here against this virus. And, Father, I thank you and praise you for this blessed and appointed time. And we certainly are all distressed over these events that are taking place in our world. I understand it very clearly, Father, what's taking place here. I thank you for guiding me in truth and Kev as well to have our eyes open to see these things. I wish they weren't true, but they are, and we're going to deal with it by your power that is working through us. And Father Yahweh, by your mighty power and your mighty and holy name in Jesus' name, I bind and rebuke that coronavirus that is threatening our world right now. And by your mighty power, Father, in your mighty and holy name, in Jesus' name, may it be destroyed right now. I pray, Father, that you will absolutely destroy it and take it out and off and away from us. And may it never return again. And I ask that you bless and heal all the people that are affected by this right now. My heart breaks for the people that have perished due to this, and I ask that you bless and comfort their families. But for the people that are dealing with this, that are still alive, I ask that you bless each and every one of them with a healing miracle. Father, I know you make the impossible possible. There's nothing you can't or won't do. And we are all coming together now as your children, asking you for blessing and favor and mercy and asking for your power to destroy this virus and take it from all of us and take it from off of the earth and dispose of it, Father, please. By your mighty power, Father, in your mighty and holy name, in Jesus' name, may it be so. And Father, I also pray uh, again, for all that are affected, I, I've had some prayer requests, and one is uh, my dear friend, Dr. Rudolph Garza, who is uh, from California. He's in Montana now. And uh, Father, I ask that you please bless him and heal him quickly from this and keep his daughter Mary blessed and safe as well. We give you the praise and the thanks and the glory for evermore, Father, in Jesus' name. And Kev, a quick story about Dr. Garza. Uh, I recently visited him in Bozeman, Montana, and performed a spiritual deliverance over him. And I was shocked because in return, he helped me as well. And uh, he is a um, top-notch chiropractor. And he did some work on me, and I still feel tremendously better. I, I was walking around in pain for years, and God really made that connection. And a uh, big thank you and shout out to Dr. Garza for his expertise in helping me, God working through him to help me to feel better. And so praise God for that, and God bless Dr. Garza and his daughter, Mary. Um, 
now I want to, and if there's anybody else that's out there listening in or watching, if you're in need of prayer, just send it to Kev right now, post it in the chat, Kev will see it. Um, and if I can pray for you, uh, I certainly will. I'm going to uh, quote some words from Jesus now. This is Matthew uh, 22, verses 37 through 40. Jesus, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And in Matthew 23, verse 12, For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. I believe that 100%, Kev. And in Mark uh, 11, verses 24 and 25, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive your sins. And I'm going to say the uh, Beatitudes again. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall persecute you, and they shall say all manner of evil against you for my sake. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward in heaven will be great. And this, Jesus said, is how you should pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Have kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forevermore. Glory, hallelujah. So I pray that you will take these words to heart, and I pray that this will fill you. That's what I'm praying for, is just the spiritual filling of the power of God and hearing the words of Jesus. And Kev, I'm looking right now, uh, you sent me two names to pray for, and for some reason, it's not showing up on my screen. Is there any way that you can send those the first name again, and then I'll pray for that person, and then the second as well? Um, give me two seconds. I'll try and send it again. The first one was one of our members, Jules. And she was Jules? Asked, yeah, if you pray for her mum. She's 72 and battling cancer. She didn't actually leave a name there. And the second one, uh, please pray for my husband to be healed. His name is John. Okay, so let's pray for Jules' mother, and, and Father, I ask that you please bless this woman with a total healing miracle. Though she has cancer, that means nothing, because you have worked through me in the past to heal people from stage four cancer, and I pray this for this woman now, Father, that you will please bless her and heal her with a total healing miracle. By your mighty power, Father, and your mighty and holy name, in Jesus' name, may it be so. May peace and good health be upon this woman, and may it remain with her forevermore, in Jesus' name. And the second one was John? It was, Bill, yes. Father, we pray for John right now. I ask that you bless him with a total healing miracle and bless him with everything that he is needing. Please, Father. We give you the praise and the thanks and the glory forevermore in Jesus' name. And of course, we're going to be here every week, and I think um, this show will get more and more popular. 
Uh, I think today we probably lost a few viewers because of the time change, but at least it's going to be in the archive for them to catch up, Bill. But yeah. we're going to be here regularly, and I think um, me and Bill both agree we would never force anybody into anything. However, never. however, I, all I ask from the audience is you respect, you know, that not everyone maybe shares your beliefs, and there are people that really will take a lot of comfort from this at this time. And even if it's not something that you believe in personally, then if it's helping others, then surely that has to be a good thing. And I think on this channel, more than anywhere that, that I really frequent on YouTube anyway, people do come together. We are very open-minded. We are very diverse. And it's that respect for others, you know, that free will for us to choose our own paths. I, I think... Um, I can't think of a better place and a better time and two better people to be doing this. And I don't say that from an ego point of view, but I think a, a lot of people like it, Bill, when we do team up together. I bring out your best, you bring out my best. And then um, I think we're going to probably see this kind of format explode over the weeks to come. And that's good because people need to know that there's somewhere that they can come where they won't be judged uh, and they can share in what you're offering here. And what you're offering, really, it's free of charge. And, yes. and it's that armor of God and that warrior mode. We are in a fight right now. Let's make no mistake about it. And it's not to monger fear or anything else. And I'm not trying to sell you anything. But I think to be best prepared for that battle is the very least that we can do, Bill. And I think you're offering almost like a, a, a spiritual boot camp for the uninitiated to getting us ready for these... Uh, change times i don't call them end times they're change times because nothing's ending it's just we have to make sure that we make it through to the other side right i couldn't agree with you more i'm in total agreement with you brother and yes uh you know this is an appointed time by god god put this on my spirit i was already very busy and i thought i don't have time for this but when god puts something on me i have to obey that that's part of my strong relationship and commitment to God. When he puts something on me, I'm going to do it. And I, again, thank you, um, because obviously God put that on you as well to join me in this. And yes, I totally agree with you. We're a great team and I praise God for that. And we'll always bring out the best in each other and we will always move forward together and may God always work through us to be a blessing to others and a shining example of his love, mercy, and goodness. So, Bill, you're going to be on another show just 15 minutes from now. Let people know where you're going to be so they can tune in for that. You, you've got a very strong following out there. I imagine a lot of the audience would uh, love to hear you on Howard Hughes' show as well. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm excited about that. And I must admit, I didn't know a whole lot. Kev actually made me aware of Howard Hughes. I was just asked to appear on this show, and um, I didn't know anything about it, to be honest with you. And uh, Kev has enlightened me, you know, on the Howard Hughes show, which, um, you know, now I, I was looking forward to it either way, whether it was uh, a small show or a larger show, like Kev is saying here. Um, I'm very much looking forward to it. And if you're, uh, if you want to come over and hear that show, Kev has posted the, uh, the links and the information for the show. I'm very much looking forward to it. If you guys want to, uh, after we've concluded here, if you want to jump over there and and uh, listen in, I think they are going. I think you'll be able to watch it. I because they they want to do this through Skype, so uh, I guess you'll be able to watch it just like this. Yeah, usually I think Talk Radio have got a YouTube channel, so I think they'll probably be simulcasting the same as we do when we're on TFR. But um, I, I think it's a big deal. I really do, Bill. You know, um, because you're over. In America, you maybe don't appreciate it, but you know that that's probably our coast to coast over here. And Fantastic. Um, like when David Ike goes on there, he he sees it as being kind of you know combative because it's like a dip in the toe into the mainstream and very kind of famous presenters on there from the UK, Eamon Holmes, and and again, I think it's uh, interesting that at this time you're getting the opportunity to speak to a wider audience, you know. Usually yeah. big shows in the mainstream, we're very critical of them. I have to take my hat off to Mike Hughes. Sorry, Howard Hughes, for taking you on to his show, you know. 
Well, that's fantastic, and I am very much looking forward to it. And it's funny that you brought up Coast to Coast because uh, I brought up uh, Tom Danheiser the other day. I, I was on some other show, and I brought him up, uh, you know, about they, they asked me about the Spiritual Warrior. How did I get that name, the Spiritual Warrior? And I said, well, that came from Tom Danheiser of Coast to Coast Radio. He's the one that when I was out there doing that TV show with George Norrie, Beyond Belief, uh, I shot two episodes with him uh, many years ago, uh, probably four or five years ago. Um, it was Tom Danheiser who said, you know, you are Bill Bean, the spiritual warrior. So that's where that came from. Well, it's definitely a good name. It's an apt name. It's uh, very, very suited to you, Bill. And um, I'll never forget the day I walked around Crowley's house and I said, you know, I need Bill Bean and his warrior angels here. And then a week later, the place burnt to the ground. Hey, I'm just saying. Praise I'm, God. I'm just saying, Bill. We but, praise um, God for it. I'm going to let you get going, brother, because you need to go and get ready for this other show. So um, I want All to right, thank everyone for being here today. We'll be back at the slightly later time next week. It'll be 7 p.m. on the East Coast where Bill is. That's midnight over here. In fact, yes, it will be midnight next week in the UK. Next Saturday sunday morning our clocks go forward again so it will be midnight for this show in the uk next week and it will be 2 p.m on the west coast i'd love to see you all here tell everyone you know on social media that bill bean will be here once a week with the power hour of prayer and bill i'll let you say the final words well again thank you so much brother and, and i have to say hi to your wonderful mom pearl and uh, and your family and, and love and God bless all of you. And I pray that God keeps all of you safe and may keep all this garbage far from from all of you. And that goes for everybody out there that's uh, watching and listening in as well. Uh, much love and God bless all of you. And may God keep you blessed and safe. And let's just try and stay together. And the only way that we can stay together in this is by taking it to God and having that level of faith. And if there's anybody out there that is having a spiritual, that you're in true spiritual dire straits, and you feel like you are, uh, you know, under some type of oppression or curse or hex or vex or spell, whatever it may be, where you know someone that you think is possessed, don't hesitate to contact me. Now, I am not currently traveling, obviously, due to what's going on, but I am still having uh, Skype sessions and phone sessions as well. So please don't hesitate to contact me, billbean.net. You can email me directly from the site and uh, we will get back to you. So thank you, everybody. Much love and God bless all of you and may God keep you safe. Awesome, and I'll be back in an hour or so with the guys for Code 322, an ode to the Guidestones. Until next time, take care and God bless.